Under the International Residential Code, a habitable space has to be at least 70 square feet and a horizontal dimensions no less than seven feet. Now, by definition, that's a space for living, sleeping, eating, or cooking. So cooking, that means a kitchen is a habitable space. However, a kitchen is an exception to that minimum required 70 square feet and seven feet. There are no size requirements for the kitchen. Now, minimum sizes and minimum ceiling height is the subject of my next Know the Code article in Fine Home Building Magazine that I've been working on. And I just got back the edits from my editor asking me some questions about my draft, including this one. This is tripping me up. I understood a kitchen to be a habitable room earlier in the paragraph. Why is it an exception? Now, I could certainly answer that question with some of my own thoughts and ideas on why we don't regulate the size of kitchens. But as a professional building code educator, I've got to do a little bit more than just that. So this video is specifically to show you how somebody that does what I do for a living would research that question. Why is the kitchen an exception to the required area for habitable space? So I usually first start this journey by coming to this bookshelf and looking in the code and commentary published by the ICC. ICC publishes commentary books on all of their code books. And what the commentary does is it provides you the actual code section, just everything that's in the code book. But then after each section, it provides commentary, written explanation about what that code means. I don't have a copy of the 2021, but I'm going to go look in the 2018. So as I said, you get the section, and then here's that exception for kitchens, and then here is where you get the commentary. Let's see what it says. It says, all habitable rooms and spaces other than kitchens are required to have 70 square feet, so it didn't give us any help. And on the next page for minimum dimensions, exception kitchens, and the commentary explanation is of no help. Oh, oftentimes, the commentary is a great resource for other insight into the code provision. And in this case, it was not. That's why that's just the starting point. Now, a lot of the codes that we have today, we have because they are historical. They've been around a long time. That's what all this stuff behind me is. So another way to find out the reasoning or some further discussion about a code is to go back in history and say, was this code different at any other time? And if so, when it changed, are, is there any recorded information about why it changed? So let's do that now. So often what I'll do for the IRC is go to this shelf with all my IRCs and I'll go all the way back to the original first one to see if it's different. So here's that same section for minimum area. And then here's this other rooms. Okay, there's the part about habitable rooms, 70 square feet. And here's the exception. Oh, it is different. Every kitchen shall have not less than 50 square feet. Oh, all right, we found a little clue. Now I'm gonna move forward in the IRC to find out which edition it changed to just be an outright exception. And here we find it, kitchens. Now, side note, typically when there's a change in a code between editions, you'll get a black marginal bar. And there is no marginal bar here. And the reason for that is, this is just a clerical error in the printing of the book, because this was unchanged. So this bar is supposed to be here. And this is from the 2003 International Code, the next edition after 2000. All right, so the next step is to go into the records of the code development hearings to find out what the proposal was that changed it and to read the reason statement. A lot of times what you find in the commentary books I showed at the beginning is just information printed from the reason statement. That is a way to really drill down to the intent of a code provision. What was the proponent thinking? What was their reasoning when they first proposed it? Now, for 2000, 2003, there, there's less records. It's printed in what were called the white books. And you really, you know, you get the proposal, you get the reason statement, and then you get a little bit more. But today, it's all online, and you can actually watch the video of the testimonies at the hearings. It's so much more information 
It's so transparent. I love it. Now, real quick little hint from someone that knows what I know. When there's a change that occurred from 2000 to 2003, a lot of times it's due to the three legacy code organizations that came together and they had to do a lot of compromising and arguing and disagreeing to come up with one code, the 2000 IRC. But in the creation of the next edition, 2003, it now went into the full hearing process. And now you basically see a lot of changes from 2000 to 2003 because we're in the system of code development. I don't I hope that made sense. But it's a clue I've learned of usually what we're going to find next. Let's keep going. Now we'll go to my bookshelf with all the historical commentaries and handbooks. And at the very bottom are the white books, Proposed Changes. Now, even though the code is reprinted every three years, there's three cycles of changes from 2000 to 2003. So now I have to find out, are these 2000 changes to the 2000? Or are they 2001 changes to the 2000? Or 2002 changes to the 2000? And there's the proposal to make that change. Let's look at the reason statement. The scope and purpose of the International Residential Code is to establish minimum requirements to safeguard life, limb, and health and public welfare while simultaneously addressing affordability. The 50-square-foot requirement is a holdover from the Cable 1 and 2 Family Dwelling Code that cannot be justified as an affordable minimum standard. Neither the NBC, SBC, or UBC requirements for minimum area of kitchens in Group R occupancies. Until the current minimum area can be justified, it is inappropriate to include in this code. And for perspective... I know the proponent. It's a building official in Colorado, a building official that is fighting to help code justify affordable standards. You guys have no idea how many building inspectors fight for minimum code and maximum freedom and affordability. Now let's go look at that CABO code because we're not done. So the same thing I did with the IRC, we'll go to the CABOs and go to the original one and see if it's there. And we find it. Kitchens, not less than 50 square feet. Remember in that reason statement, it said that these three codes don't have that requirement. So why is this justified? Now, CABO is the Council of American Building Officials, an organization made up of the three building official organizations writing codes at the time. And that's that one and two family dwelling code. But originally, it wasn't by CABO in 1971 because there was a fourth organization. So yes, the 1970 Uniform, 1969 Southern, and the 1970 Boca, none of these have the set the 50 square feet. So we have to go here now. That's the logo for the American Insurance Association, formerly the National Board of Fire Underwriters. And they were actually the first organization to start writing model codes. So. Let's go there. And that's here, the building code for the National Board of Fire Underwriters. And there's that logo. Let's look at the 1967 edition, because that's before the 71. But real quick, here you see that. Recommended by the American Insurance Association, successors to the National Board of Fire Underwriters. Recommended, because this is just a model code. It's just recommended to governments. Insurance has no authority. And our journey's complete. Where kitchens serving dwelling units are completely enclosed, the gross floor area shall not be less than 60 square feet and not less than 90 square feet when dining space is included, except that in dwelling units having no bedrooms, the gross area of the kitchen shall not be less than 50 square feet. Hold on a minute. Inquisitive minds want, want to know, why would an insurance organization care about minimum room sizes? Maybe we aren't done. See, for a non-government organization to recommend a building code to a government, they might want to include some of the things that the government wants. So they'd be wise to take a peek at the minimum property standards from the Federal Housing Administration. Minimum room sizes. One bedroom, 60 square feet. Talk to the field office for efficiency type combinations. There's the route. Now I've done my work and I can respond to my editor. And that's the end of this story.